I'm just going to get started and, and you know, I'm just going to start out and ask, you know, the market, you know, we had a swoon and now it's going up. How's, how is, and I don't want to know what you own, Let, you know, we don't want to get wrapped up in it. How is everybody doing with it? Are you, are you, are, are you participating? Good. Are you, there you go. There you go. You're participating in it a little bit. All right. Well, tonight what we'll do, Owen and I have brainstorming sessions all the time. And tonight what we're going to do is we're going to talk about foundations. And as you saw on the St. Louis Investors meeting, what we'll do, live meeting, we're going to talk about how to take those foundations to help you find stocks. My, my deal is always this. I see a lot of people on the Internet that they give ideas, but they don't teach. They don't, they don't teach. They don't answer questions. I know because I know some of you guys. They don't teach. They don't answer questions, which is okay. It's all okay. right. You know, I'm not criticizing. But the problem I always had with this, and it's because of my background from years of trying to figure this crud out, I realized that if you don't teach and you just give ideas, well, then what if, what if you hook on to somebody and that person dies? You're no better off. And so then you've got to start all over again. You're always at somebody else's mercy. And I thought, no, I, I don't want to do that. I want to try to explain things. Well, it's like the great quote and parable. Give a man a fish, feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish, feed him for a lifetime. And so that's a real ax to grind with me. It's been, just so you all know, it's been my, my background. Even when I was in graduate school, they would ask me to teach classes. And then after that, I, I did teach. I taught in Oregon and Illinois. I was involved with scouts for over 20 years, a scout leader. I've been a youth group leader for over 20 years, and I still am. And I love, I love teaching. I really do. And then we've done the meetup, golly, over there in Chesterfield. That's been a, a long time, a long time. So anyway, I'm glad you're all here. How is everybody doing in the markets? How are things going? Are you, are you, are you actively involved with it? Do you watch it? Can you watch it? Are you, are you pretty much uh, laissez-faire with it? Just kind of let it go? And a lot of people, you know, they talk about buy and hold. You know, I'm just going to own it. And I tell people this, and most people don't know this. Who knows what the, does everybody know what XLK is, the technology ETF? Yeah, everybody knows XLK, right? It's, it's the ETF that owns the biggest co technology companies in the world. If you bought that, in January of 2000, it took you almost 15 years to get back to break even. That's a haul. 15 years. Just the swoon. And the same thing's true. You could say, well, yeah, but that's technology. Financials did the same thing, too. Financials had a swoon, and it took that long. And so it's just really important. But, but your point is well taken. See, that's... That's a broad-ranged approach, which is good with ETFs. But if you can do your homework and find some great companies that are franchises, you know, the, I always tell people, it's like, what do you want to buy? buy if, I say this a lot. I'm going to do an Internet search. I'm going to go on, I ain't going to go on Yahoo. I'm going on Google, right? I'm going to buy something online. I'm going through Amazon. Look for franchises. And look for franchises that have a niche that nobody else has and they're making a lot of money. Strive to make. And you could sit there and say, well, no, Pat, you've got a contradiction there because Amazon, you know, just recently started making money. But if you look at their revenue growth year after year after year, it's staggering their explosive revenue growth for a multitude of years. They're just they were making a phenomenal amount of money. Wall Street's valuing them, not on earnings per se, now they are making money, but on the prospects that eventually they're going to turn this ship into a money-making proposition. So just, just some things to consider, and also co coinciding and complementing what you're seeing today. Please, I encourage you, stay away. How you doing? Good to see you. Stay away from the five-minute charts. I, I say that a lot at Mission Winners, and I can't stress it enough. I used to have on my computer screen, I'd have a daily chart here and a five-minute chart here, side by side. And you'd be looking at it, 
And you, you see on the five minute chart, you see it drop. I'm like, oh God, I, I got to get out. I got to get out. You'd sell and you'd be out of it. And the thing may fall a little bit, but then turn and come back up. But then you're out. And it's like, well, I can't buy it back at a higher price now. And so th then you missed it. So learn from my mistakes, please. If you, if you look at anything, please look at weekly charts. You look at monthly too. Monthly, weekly, daily, hourly, if you need to fine-tune some, fine something, 30 minute. And every once in a while, maybe, maybe you'll take it down to a 10 minute chart and you can say, Patrick, why would you want to do that? And I'll just share this with you. Let's suppose, this is real world, this isn't hypothetical. You've got a stock that's going sideways on a daily chart and it starts to break above a price. It's been trading between 60 and 65 for a long time. Finally, it starts to approach 65. One of the greatest tactics, and I teach this every day, as you know, every day. As it starts to approach the pivot price, take it down to an hourly chart or a 30-minute chart and look and see if volume's coming into it. And you can see constantly, it's where other people are seeing this that don't know what most people, most people that really do this know. I mean, has, have you ever heard, have you ever read from anybody taking it down to an hourly or 30 minute chart no. before you buy? Okay, most people haven't, most people haven't. And I, you know, after doing this for 30, you, you start to learn some of the, I hate, I hate to say tricks of the trade, but some of the things that you can do to see. And the, the reason I bring this up, and this is my, this is my own quote, People talk with their mouths and vote with their pocketbooks. Pocket books. And what do I mean by that? We can all talk about a stock, but I'll tell you what, it takes volume, it takes buying, it takes real buying, not 25 shares. I mean, it takes big money to move these stocks. And it's reflected how? It's reflected in volume. And you can get a jump start as it approaches. And by the way, let me clarify. I'm not talking about if the breakout's $65, don't wait till it's $65 to look at an hourly chart. Look at it as it's approaching that price earlier in the day. And you'll see, some of you work with me, and you'll, you've seen these bars that the previous bar, it did, I'll make up a number, it did 500,000 shares. And the bar before that, it did 350,000 shares. And then the bar, as it's approaching the breakout, it's already done 800,000 shares and it hasn't even broken out yet. You've seen it. You know what I'm talking about. It's a telltale sign. They're voting. They're voting, and you can get in there. And now some people say, hey, I work. I can't do that, and I respect that completely. So what could be the solution for you? It's very simple. Only focus on the absolute best charts, and we'll, we're going to look at some tonight. Focus on a chart, and I hate to say this because some people get mad, that Ray Charles could see. All right. I mean, it's just... It's so clean and simple that everybody sees it. And here's why. If you're the only person about, use some common sense here. If you're the only person in the world that sees the chart pattern, is that going to help you if you buy it? No, you want everybody, everybody to see what you see. So they'll act on it also. And how will they act on it? There you go again. Volume. And if the volume's not there, and the volume's not coming into it, don't buy it. Yes, so this turn. Um, are the institutional investors, are, are the institutional companies, are they buying at the beginning of the day also? Oh, right? yes. The beginning <coughs> and the end. Oh, yes, definitely. And that's why you buy, that's what you're looking for at the end of the day. You're that's looking right. for that push. That's right, that's yes, exactly. That. There's a great tactic. You will also find this, and Tony brings up a very good point. It, and I've been doing this since 1986, and so you learn, you, you pick up some different tricks of the trade. One of the greatest tactics you can do is if you're ever interested in, you will see on what I call, admission winners, I call it the max list. It's a list of stocks that I've had together long before I ever heard bang from Jim Cramer. All right, I've, I had this together long, be years before that. I'm not knocking him, but it's... Do we have a picture of the max list up by chance? Do we have any max list stuff? Yeah, I think so. I, I can show you. These are the names, folks. These are the institutional names that they have to own or they'll be fired. If you uh, let's let's be blunt. 
If you manage a mutual fund or private money and you don't own Apple and Amazon and Google, you're going to be fired. You know, your, your clients look, well, this person's an idiot. How can they not own those stocks? You have to. I call it the max list. These are institutional stocks, big name stocks that do a lot of volume every day where if you've got to put, and we'll pull up a chart, if you take a look at the volume on Apple every day and then take the volume, average daily volume, and multiply it by the price and look at how many hundreds of millions or over a billion of dollars a day can slide in and out of Apple without moving it. You want to put some money to work? There you go. And you can do it, and by gum, you can get your price. It didn't used to be like that, by the way. Stocks were much thinner. They didn't do as much volume. But you adapt to the environment, and that's the way it is. That's the way it is now. So question, let's go back to it. How is everybody doing in the markets? Are they doing okay? Are you missing it? Are you involved with it? Are you? And by the way, time out. I don't want to know what you own. Okay, we're not getting into that. All right. But is it, is it, are you involved with stocks? Okay, are, and you're happy with what's going on? No. no. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. And you'd like... Hopefully, I got it. Let's, you know, I'm not saying this to bait you, okay? This isn't something like, well, I've got something really great for you. No, that's a cry. No, I'm just sitting there thinking, I want to know where you're coming from so that we're on the same, we're all on the same page as far as what you're looking at. Just to let you know, and I think most of you know this, I've been doing this since 1986. I taught on the university level before then. Since 1986, my dad died shortly after I got into business. And my mom, he owned a hardware store, and my mom sold the business and gave me money to invest. And she's a widow. And I realized, hey, I, I've got to get serious. I can't lose her money. I, 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 and it really hit me hard, and I, I probably said this story, but I'll share this with you. I was working in a brokerage office in Clayton, and a manager was telling me about a stock, and it sounded really good. And I said, well, that's I'm not going to use any names here. And I said, that, that sounds really good. I said, are you thinking, he's telling me about his story about this stock. Are you thinking about maybe buying some of that for yourself? I think I might buy some of that for myself. And he said, I wouldn't buy that. <laughs> and I have to tell you, folks, that really hurt me because I'm sitting there thinking, these people, these brokers are putting people's money and stuff that they don't really care. They don't care about it. They're, and I, 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 I said to myself, I have got to frickin' figure out a way on how to do this, or I am in deep trouble. Well, what happened after that? <laughs> on October 9th, 1987, I'm a broker, and I have my oldest son is born. So I'm a dad. And shortly thereafter, we all know what happened to that, we had a stock market crash. And my business, I thought, I'm in big, big trouble. But there's something that really helped me, and I know I've shared this with this room before, and there's a couple of books I, I suggest you read, but the man who saved me, I will give credit where credit's due, is Martin Zweig, in that I learned something. Every person that I ever, ever talked to in the investments field, I try to learn things. And what I learned from him was put in sell stops. I, for all my managed accounts, I had in sell stops months before the crash of 87. Good till cancel sell stops. And I just, yes, sir? What's the difference between a sell stop and a put? Good question. A sell stop will protect the asset that you own and get you out of it, okay? If you have a put, let me, let me put an assumption in here. If you buy a put, do you still, do you own the stock or are you just outright buying the put? Oh, you're, then you own the stock to hedge yourself. No, I, I no, no, that's a good question. Uh, does everybody, let's, let's address this real quick, okay? Bottom line is I got stopped of everything several weeks before the crash, and I was out. So we just waited. And it's not because so, I'm so smart. I learned this from Martin Zweig. But then I will also tell you this. By God, I made it a point. I said, if I ever have the opportunity, I'm going to meet him. And I have, twice, and talked with him. And he had, he had a profound impact on my life. He really did, and, and I'm, grateful. I'm grateful that I did meet him. 
a put. Let's talk about a put. All right. Does anybody know about options? Okay, well, we're going to just delve, delve into this a little bit. A put is a contract that allows you to sell 100 shares of stock at a certain price with a certain month's expiration. That is a put. Okay? And we're not going to go real deep into this. But let's suppose that you have a put that allows you to sell, sell, I'm going to make a, a Apple at $200 a share. I don't know what Apple is right now, but we're just going to say at $200 a share. And the price of Apple starts to drop. You have a contract that says no matter what that price drops to, or drops, you'll be able to sell it at $200 a share. If the price of the stock's dropping, what happens to the value of that put? It goes up. It goes up. That is buying a put. It is insurance on your portfolio. All right? Now, I'm going to take this a step further. I don't, I used to do a ton of option stuff. All right? And this is very important. Be extremely careful with options. I can't stress that enough. In fact, I only know one person who consistently makes money with options. Only one, and he's in California. And we trade together a little. That's it. I don't know anybody else. Options have a time value element. You buy an option, and you can buy an option that goes out one month, or you can buy another option that goes out two months. The bottom line is it has a finite life, and then it's done. So if I want you to think about this. Let's suppose you buy a put that allows you to sell a stock for $200 a share, and it's an option that expires, a contract that expires in two months, and the stock's trading at around $200 a share right now. Well, you're going to pay for that, right? It's like life insurance. You're going to pay for it. If the stock does not drop below $200 a share, you know, at expiration, thank you. It's zero, right? You, and again, let's back up. I used to teach classes to brokers on options. You have a contract that allows you to sell Apple, 100 shares at Apple, at $200 a share. Well, if it's selling for $205 a share, or $210 or $220, your contract ain't worth nothing. Nobody's going to buy it. Okay, so those are options, and, and we could go more into that, but that's a whole, sometime, we, you know, as we progress through, through our, our live meeting, if you're ever interested in having a class on options, hey, I'm more than happy to do it, okay? We, we could do a ton of, ton of different things with options, all right? But that's, a, that's an entirely different subject. So I met these individuals, and the bottom line is they really helped me in my journey, and one of the highlights of my career, and I've said it to you before, but I'll say it again, was sitting down and talking one-on-one -on -one with Bill O'Neill. That was big. That was really big. And I got to do it twice. <coughs> and I just maneuvered in and was able to do this. And I learned from him a lot. So has everybody read the book, How to Make Money? Has anybody not read the book, How to Make Money in Stocks? Okay. A couple of suggestions for you. <coughs> Please, if you're serious about investing, buy the book, How to Make Money in Stocks, from Bill O'Neill. Read it and study it. He's had probably four editions now, Owen. Probably four, time, four different editions have come out, updated versions. I have all of them. I still have the original hardback book. And I'm not lying. I know I have read his book and studied his book at least 20 times. There is another great book that I encourage you to read, if you're serious about this, by a man named Mark Minervini. Mark Minervini. We go back and forth a little bit sometimes. He has a book called Trade Like a Stock Market Wizard. Trade Like a Stock Market Wizard. It is a very, very good book. And I encourage you to read that. 
By the way, oh no, you go ahead. Mark Minervini, and it's M I N E R V I N I. No, that's all right. Hey, by the way, we've got a nice casual group here. Just ask questions, you know, just say it. It's all right. We're all here together. It's, it's what we want to do. Those two books can really help you. But I'm going to take it a step further. There's another book that I would recommend from a man named Jack Schwager. And his, by the way, I don't get any, I don't want you to think like, oh, he's trying to sell me books. Jeez, no, jeez, no, good Lord, no. Um, his book is called Market Wizards. Great book. Interview with top traders. He interviews commodity traders, but he interviews stock traders in it. Market Wizards. If you're really serious about this, read those books. Study them. I'm not kidding. And I got to tell you, the last chapter in Market Wizards is by a man named Van, Dr. Van Tharp, T-H-A-R-P. Read that chapter and study it. Because I say this a lot on Twitter, on Mission Winners, the biggest part of this game is not what is before your eyes, it's what's between your ears. And if your head is not screwed on straight, you will have a problem in the market. I know because it's happened to me before, more than a couple of times, when something traumatic was going on, whether it be a friend dying of cancer. I just, I pretty much, I've learned, I gotta quit. I gotta quit and I gotta pull, pull back because I can't get it right. So, or the, or, or the birth of a child. When, our kid, when my kids were born, I kinda pulled it in. I was like, you know, I, gotta, I got more important things to do. But his, his interview by Dr. Van Tharp is wonderful. And that's T-H-A-R-P, Dr. Van Tharp. By the way, who's interviewed in that book? Bill O'Neill's interviewed in that book. That's pretty good. Ed Sakota is interviewed in that book, Market Wizards. So, and if you get it and you don't like it, bring it and I'll buy it from you. Okay, it's, it's that great. Yes, sir. Those books are in the library too. Oh, thank you, John. Yeah. I'm on hold for it, but. Yeah, there you go. Somebody's got it checked out right now. Yeah. So you can look at it, see if you like it, and then buy it off of it. And you bet. You bet. Good point. Thank you. Yeah, it's. The reason I bring these things up is not to try to inundate you with reading a lot of different things. It's, let's be brutally blunt. I was a broker, I was an investments advisor, and I saw in the business there are great folks out there, but many of them they may not have your interest completely at heart. And you gotta be really careful with it. Which I'm gonna go off on a tangent and say this. There's a great quote from a friend of mine who's an attorney. Annuities aren't bought, they're sold. Okay, so annuities have a very high commission, normally 5%. There are no break point, no break points. Great question, break, break points. On many investments, there is an investing maxim. The more you buy, the cheaper the commission. All right? With annuities, there is no more you buy, the cheaper the commission. If you buy $100,000 in an annuity, it's 5%. If you buy 200,000, it's 5%. If you buy a million, it's 5%. There's no break points. And they, people love, love to sell them. Okay, so, and again, you're talking to a guy who was a broker, who saw the games that were played. Years ago, what was it? It was limited partnerships. Good Lord. And back then, limited partnerships, 8% commission, no break points. That's just a travesty. Just awful. So, I got off on a tangent, but just, my goal is not just to get stock ideas. We can do that. Okay, we can, I can spend two hours right now, and we can go through a bunch of charts, and I'll give you some ideas. All right. But it's to educate you so that it, it, hopefully it helps you and, and maybe saves you some heartache. Because I've seen people really, through the years, I've seen people really get hurt with stuff, really get hurt. 
This is the max list. I put this together, and some of you know from the old, the other meetup, I've had most of these stocks in here for a long, like a, over a decade. All right. Now, some of them are newer and haven't been there, like NVIDIA and Square, Tesla, Twitter, they're newer. But you know these names. If you have to, I'm sorry, I'll get out of your way. If there is one list of stocks to focus on, and only one, and you can't look at anything else, these are them. And it's like, oh, it's because you picked them, Pat? No, it's not because I picked them. It's because the market picked them. The market picked these stocks. I have a separate page on my computer, and I scroll these charts. Well, some of you are admission winners, and you know, what am I doing? Every day, the market closes at 3 o'clock, and starting in around what? 20 to 3, I am what? Scanning the max list. Every day, I scan it near the close three times. I'll scan it at around 20 to 3, I'll scan it at quarter to 3, and I'll scan it at 10 to 3. And here is a great investing tactic for you that most people don't know, but you can make money with this. But I have to stress, this is more of a trade than an investment, okay? No day trade, but a trade. Here's what I find, yes. Here's, and there's some people in this room that know this. <laughs> Amazon, that this has been like 100 points, 100 points in two days. Here is, here's what you do. When you find a chart, do we have, we got charting ability, don't we? Look at Owen, he's amazing. Thank you, Owen. When you go through the max list, we should go through the max list. You want to, Owen? Can we do that? You said you scan these, all of them, three times or pretty close. So you're scanning all those stocks in like a five month period, right? Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. But here's all I'm looking at is the day chart. I'm just looking at the day chart, and I'm going to show you what I'm looking at. <coughs> there we go. Great. We'll just, we'll just, look, no, do Amazon, could you? Please? Yeah. Okay. This was the setup. And it's very, very simple. And this is a statistical fact. On these stocks, if they, a couple of constraints, the market's closing strong, the market is in an uptrend, and the stock is closing near its highs for the day on a pickup in volume, and it is a good chart pattern on a daily chart. <coughs> I just tossed out a lot of constraints right there, folks. And if you want me to say, say them again, I will. Pardon? Okay, very good. Several times near the close, what I'm looking for is the market is closing strong. And I'm gonna be more specific than that. These are primarily NASDAQ stocks. I want the NASDAQ to be closing strong. Now, how can I look at the NASDAQ? I'll tell you what I use. I don't look at the NASDAQ index. I look at an ETF because I can really see the volume in that ETF. This is the ETF I look at. So I'm going to give this to you now. QLD, Queen Larry David. Look at that ETF and see how it's closing. Is it closing strong? Thank you, Owen. This is great. You can just leave that up. Awesome. So you look at the ETF. And then you look at the max list, and you look for any stocks on the max list that have a good chart pattern, and they are closing right near their highs for the day on a pickup in volume. And statistically, this is what you will find. If the market, if QLD, I'm going to be real blunt with you folks. If QLD is closing strong, and the market's in an uptrend, the odds are you will find a couple of max list stocks that if they're closing strong, they will gap up the next day. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, no, these are great. Um, I'm glad you're asking. Do you, um, the daily versus the uh, hourly or the half hour, let's take the half hour because that's closer to the close. So wouldn't you get more information about volume from the half an hour? Versus the daily? I mean, how can you see? I, I can't see that on the daily. Great question. Great question. 
I'm looking for, because I'm doing a bigger picture now, because I'm looking at a daily chart, I want to see that daily volume. It's really big. I want to know that the volume of this bar today is heavier than the previous day. That's why I'm looking at the, yes, I want to look at that daily volume. You got it. Daily to daily. So taking a look here, okay, this is QLD yesterday, correct? Right? Okay. This is QLD, not today. This is, this is yesterday. Okay? This is QLD and it was closing. Is that the close yesterday and this is today's action? Yes. Okay, good. I want to make sure I'm right. So go ahead and take that. Take that cursor. Okay, so take a look at this. QLD is bouncing off the eight period exponential moving average. It's not really doing it on heavy volume. But it is closing strong, and it is closing above the previous day's high. So you've got a couple of constraints that are met. Now, QLD is the NASDAQ 100. Most of the max list stocks are NASDAQ 100. So here's the setup. You see this and see the way it's closing? Now go ahead and punch up Amazon, okay, good buddy? Amazon, look at how it was closing on this day. See that closing right near the highs? Yeah. On a pickup in volume versus the previous days? And that's why you bought it. Yeah. That is correct. That is exactly why I bought Amazon right, and I told, I told the members, I'm buying Amazon at the close, or right near the close. I give people about 10 minutes time. So, and, well, today it went up 36 points. So, that is a great, great institutional setup for you that you can make you can make some decent money in, in a day by the way when I did this and there's people in this room you can attest to it when I, this whole time I never looked at a freaking five minute chart on this no way but I want to show you something very intriguing Owen um, this is mine this is my platform right we're on my market okay can you scroll down uh, Let's, can we raise it up so that we show my list? Oh, you can just hit this box right here if you want. Can I just ask another question? No, yes, oh, of course. <laughs> you betcha. No, I love it. Go ahead. Um, okay, what's the significance? Like, I was watching Amazon tick by tick toward the end, 10 minutes, the last 10 minutes. Yeah. They chopped it down to 20, and then it... Uh, they, more buyers started to come in at 23. Yeah. And, got it, and they got it up to 23. Yeah. And then after hours, it went up to 24. Okay. Yeah, I love it's that. Exciting. Oh, yeah. And then, um, so what information can you gather from that activity? Great. I like it that it's going up after hours, uh -huh. but I pay very little credence or attention to it because I have found that after hours trading, is not that reliable for follow through the next day. What about the end of the day, though? Before oh, yeah. That, that was a good sign. That's that a great sign. You can see, bought. when you see volume flooding into it, it's like, yeah, you can look at a 10-minute chart and a 30-minute chart, and you'll see big money's buying the stock, and that sucker gaps up. You betcha. Okay, so here's Amazon. All right, good. Let's, let's do this, Owen. Hit that box. Hit this. Raise that. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Thank you very much. So right here, this is the max list. Go ahead and click on that. Could you be buddy? We're going to go through this. See, what I like to do is it's great to conceptualize and kind of do touchy-feely gray stuff. But you know what? Let's cut to the chase. The reason you're here is you want to learn about the market to make money. True? Yeah. And that's why you're doing this. This isn't like, well, Patrick, give me some ideas on P-E ratios. I give a rat's ass about that. No, I'm here to learn about making money. That's what we're after. So that's what we're doing. So right here is the max list. You can say, how is it sorted? I think I've got this sorted by, yeah, that's right. I thought so. Percent off high. Automatic. So Owen, let's do something. Let's, let's just click on the first one. You open up in the chart? Oh, sure. Please. I'm sorry. I should have said that. Okay. And then what we're going to do is let's, uh, let's, hit this box to drag that window down to make the chart bigger. Thank you. All right. 
So now here's Visa. So we have a, and I'll block, I'm sorry, I'm blocking your view. And by the way, if I get in your way, just, hey, can you move over? Sorry about that. Is here's the setup. We look at QLD and we see how QLD is closing. Is it closing near the highs of the day? And is it closing in a decent chart pattern, which it was? And then you can go in there, do something for me real quick. Punch up, just punch up a chart on QLD for me in the upper left-hand corner. Okay, see this, don't look at today. See that day right there? Closing near its highs of the day. Now it's right after a holiday, so the volume isn't heavy, but it's closing right near the highs of the day yesterday. Bouncing off the, this is the eight period moving average, exponential moving average, folks. It's a moving average that I use and there's a reason why. If you ever wanna know, I'll tell you. But look at how the trend, look at the trend on that sucker. So it's closing near its highs for the day, yesterday, and the market's strong, and this is today's follow through. Remember yesterday. Today is great, but remember yesterday. Closing near the highs of the day. Now go back to the max list. You'll love this. This is the real world, folks. Is this helping you? Yeah. Okay. By the way, you know, hey, we're all friends here. If you're like, you know, this really isn't relevant, Pat, you know, you're not going to hurt my feelings. I want you to come back. I don't want to sit there and waste your time. I I, by the way, a lot of people do theoretical stuff. This is real world stuff, all right? We do this. We do this. On the Bible, we own these. We bought these yesterday, okay? So, yes. So you have a question. And, and that is, uh, I know we talked about looking at the performance, you know, down to the, the day and down to the hour and so forth. Is, would you advise initially to be familiar with alert during the past 12 Oh, sure. And that's true, and that's why every chart that I look... <laughs> no, every, every month we talk about the okay, big picture. Okay. Every month. We always sit there. Every chart that you're going to see tonight is what kind of a chart? That's exactly right. So every chart we look at, every one of them, you will see. The only reason it's considered is it's above the moving averages and the moving averages are rising. Always. Which really drives home on a very important point that you're bringing up. We never buy junk. I want the leaders. I want to buy the leaders. No junk. So, yeah, always bigger picture. If it's, I don't care how great the chart looks today, if it's in a downtrend, I don't even look at it. Okay, so I, Well, it is a, the max list is a static list, but I'll, I'll show, but see this, there's always a method to my madness. And I asked Owen this, and y'all, so you can't catch me in a lie. How did I say this list is sorted? It's not sorted by industry group. It's not sorted by price. It's sorted by, thank you, right here. And you see that little lock there? It's locked. I locked that sucker. This one, industry group rank, see that little lock? It's open, but percent off high. The stocks closest to 52-week highs come up first, which complements your statements. That's what we're looking for. Good point. Okay, so let's do this one. Let's just hit the first one. Visa. Sure, we'll just, we'll just zip here real quick. And I'll show you. And go ahead and hit that box to drag that down. Thank you, sir. So look at Visa. We know that QLD closed near its highs for the day yesterday. Visa did, too, and followed through. But Visa is not really that explosive of a stock, and so I didn't really take an, I didn't really consider it. Go ahead and just hit the space bar. We'll, we'll expedite this. MasterCard closed near its highs, and it just kind of wiggled around, but it's not that This is what you'll find. The listed stocks that trade on the New York, overall, they're just not as explosive as the NASDAQ stocks. So hit the next one, good buddy. There you go. There's one of them. Look at how that closed. And that stock went up, by the way, we own it down in here, all right? And so we're up 50 points in six days on this right here. And it went up again today. We bought more yet. There you go. Keep on. And you can see the close. Look at the theme. Close is strong. Close is strong. That's what we're looking for. Hit the next one, buddy. There's QLD closing. Go ahead and hit the next one. SSO, hit the next one. There we go. Amazon. Closes strong yesterday, follows through today, up 36 today. But you can see the setup. 
We bought this right near the close yesterday. And it's, you know, it's grinding night, 36 today. Okay. You just keep on going here. Netflix. We're in Netflix down here, and we're just letting it work. But we're not buying, we're not going to do anything else with Netflix right now. Yes. Great question. On that one, I'll tell you exactly. Owen, do me a favor. See, this is something I like to do. And one of my, I have a degree in psychology, and so there's perceptual filters that enter into our mind all the time. And this is something a lot of people do. They always look at stuff after the fact. Well, then it's easy. Well, look at that. Well, that was easy to do. No, go back in time. How did you feel when the stuff was happening? I kept it clean. How did you feel when the stuff was happening? All right, so here's what we're going to do. Thank you, Owen. No, that's good. That's good. Okay. No, you can stop there. Stop there. Okay. Are we going to be looking at this right now? No, it's below the 50-day. And it fell on really heavy volume, right? There's nothing good with that. True? True. Sorry, I'm blocking you. Okay. Let's just advance it a day. Okay. Oh, look at this. Now it gapped up, and it did it on really good volume. Okay? And that's nice to see. Not really an actionable signal there. But it's something to bear watching. Advance it a day. That's an ugly ass bar, ain't it? I mean, really, look at that, folks. Look at that. Boom, boom, on heavy volume. All right? By the way, um, this stock had earnings. Okay. Is there anything? I'm going to, no perceptual filters. You're looking at this at the close. Are you thinking about buying it? No, ain't nothing there. There's nothing there. Advance it one day. I love doing this. I used to do this. Okay, now we've got an inside day, okay, but on very low volume. So in relation to this bar, that's not that good, is it? Okay, advance it a day. Okay, good, good. <laughs> now. Yeah, there it is. I was wondering, going, hmm. Okay, now, looking at this, what did it do on that day? It moved up, and everything is in context. Did it take out the previous day's highs? Yes. Did it do it on a pickup in volume? Yes. Did it push off or through some very important moving averages? And, and I'll tell you, this red moving average is the 50-day. <laughs> it pushed, does everybody, everybody knows about the 50-day. It pushed off the 50-day, okay? It pushed through the 20-day. And it pushed through the 8-day exponential moving average. It pushed through three moving averages. And by God, if you take it down to the aisle, it did it on volume and it did it on volume pickup. There was an entry spot right in here, okay? And there's a spot right in here. What do you look for? taking out the previous day's highs or, and the previous day before that. It took this out right here. You could start and it goes. Now, here's the great investing tactic for you. What can, and you can say, God, Pat, I can't be doing this with a ton of different stocks. You don't have to. You can just do it with the max list. And we'll go through the rest of the max list and you'll see, geez, there's only like three of them that, that's, that's set up. None of the others did, so I don't even have to freaking look at them. Makes it easy. Okay. So, oh, and go ahead and advance that a day. <clears throat> and it goes up. Keep going. That's it, right? There you go. So, so, so you're in taking this out right here, taking out the highs of this bar the next day. It did it on a pickup in volume, and we own it here, and we let it work. So there we go. Now let's, do, let's hit the space bar and go to another chart. Is this helping you? See, this is, the, this is what I like. And I don't mean to sound arrogant. This isn't like, well, we're going to conceptualize in the book. No, this is, the, this is getting in the freaking trenches. This is doing it. This is what we did. This is what we do. No, you go ahead. That is correct. That is correct. But we're going to get into longer-term investing, too. Because, be, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry.
Great question. Great question. I will sell some because it's a trade. It's not an investment. I will sell off normally in 20% increments or 25% increments. And I tell everybody, I am selling 20% of Netflix. Mm -hmm. And then I'll, you know, post it, you know, that this is the price I got. If people want to follow along with me, they can do what they want. You know, it's just, I just tell people, this is what I'm doing. And then I post the price. And you could say, Patrick, why would you sell some? I might be seeing something happening in the market on a 30-minute chart that's causing me to pause with it. I might be seeing where it's coming up to a resistance level where I'm going to take some off. Okay. Now, what we're doing here, something, folks, is this is not simple canceling. I'm, but I just want to explain something that we offer that can help you. And you can say, I'm not going to do this. But after tonight, I will tell you this. I guarantee it. You're going to know more about charts than you did before the start of this meeting because most people do not really look at the charts that closely and they don't really understand them. And the one thing I do not like about Marketsmith charts is it does not have the open, high, low, close on the bars because that is so important. These are just, it's got the close. And we have complained, but they just have the close. They don't have the open. Stock charts have that. That's correct. And it's free. Yeah. The daily is free on stock charts if you want to just look at the daily. Thank you, Tony. Yeah, stockcharts.com. Yeah. yeah, it's got open, high, low, close, and volume. Yes? How often do you update your max list? The last time I updated the max list, it's, it's been a couple of years. I was trying to remember what came up with this thing. Yeah. Really? Is oh, yeah, I don't change. The latest one up? Pardon me? Is Square the last one up? Yeah. And, okay, great, great, John. Okay. If Square was the last one, what was the one before it? Looking at the map. Yes! You got it. That's exactly right. Those are the last two. Other than that, I don't make, I don't make many changes. Most of these stocks have been on there for over a decade. I don't, I don't change this too much. I don't, I don't want to. I don't, these are just stale work companies. Apple does, yeah. Yeah, they do. They do. But they are they're companies that can move. Not too much. No. That's it. You got it. I catch the whole wave. So there's, there's a Apple. Closes really strong and follows through. We were in it down lower. Keep on going here, buddy. Because then I want to get back to our... Now, let's stop. Alibaba is a max list stock. <clears throat> it's not really going up with the market, but what is it doing? Yeah, it's, you see the base here? It's just going sideways. It's going sideways. Now, let's do something here. This is something a lot of people don't do, but by God, we're going to. 515. 515, good question. Something that it really will give you a leg up over, over other people is study the price and volume every day, all right? This bar right here, can you put your cursor on that bar, Owen? Keep going, the big red bar. Oh, one, one over. Yeah, I know, this thing drives me nuts. It's so jumpy, okay? You're like, Owen's like, you, geez, you're already crazy. Okay, see, you can say, boy, that's an ugly bar. Price, always look at price. Hi, Denise. Okay, we can start the class now. We've been waiting. No, I just, good to see you. We always take a look at price relative to volume. So let's do so. Okay, go ahead and take your off the butt. Okay, so this bar, you go, that's one ugly bar. Look at how it closed. But always look at price action relative to volume. How's the volume on this bar? It's just average. So it's not a crisis situation. So we don't get all twisted with it. Now, tell me, gosh, I wish we had instant software. Oh, well, here. Put your cursor on this bar. There you go. Do the red bar if you can land on it. There you go. Okay. Now, please, okay, I'm going to take the cursor off. Okay. Everything is always relative. You walk away from here, th this is, this is, this here. by the way, you can say, 
hey, Pat, are these your ideas? No. We're talking with Bill O'Neill. We, we sat down like this. on. We sat at a table like that and talked, just him and me. Talk, he talked about this stuff. Okay? So it's, it's not, I give credit where credit's due. All right? Price and volume. Open, high, low, close, and volume. It's all relative. Tell me, do you see this bar right here? It closed down. Tell, no, I'll ask you. This bar right here, that price bar right there, can you uh, can y'all see it? Okay, tell tell me about that bar. Good bar, bad bar. That's why I always tell the. That's what I always ask the VIPs. Good bar, bad bar. Why? Okay, bad. Okay, can we? This is the numbers background in me. Can we quantify that a little bit? How how bad is it? And why is it not that bad, or why is it really bad? This bar right here, that bar. Tell me about that bar. Okay. Good. Yeah, that's. Yes. Okay. Now you're exactly right. So is that a good bar or a bad bar? Yeah, it's not that good of a bar. But is it an awful bar? No. Okay. Why? You're right. Oh, by the way, I have to share something with you. I'll never set you up for ridicule. I don't, that's bad to you. I don't do that, okay? I know people that do, and I think that's just a, a mortal sin. So. so, bad bar, but not that bad of a bar because volume's not that heavy. And then it comes back. Now, price and volume is always relevant, relative. You see this down volume bar here? Then it goes up the next day. Does it go up on heavier volume than the down volume bar? No. The next day it goes up even higher, but it does it on what? Less volume. There's not that much power there. And then what's it do? It meanders down again. Now it starts to lift off again. Look at this day right here. See that bar right there? Gosh, I wish these bars were bigger. See that bar right there? Good bar, bad bar. Thank you. Good, good. It closed up. Now, but it, did it do it on heavy volume? No, but volume is always relative. How was volume versus the previous day? Picked up. Right, John. See how it picked up? And look at how it closed right near its highs, as Denise points it out. And then today it follows through. Now tell me about today. Is this helping you folks, by the way? Is this, you're like, I don't really care about this. This is not doing it for me. Is this... This is, folks, I will tell you this. There's CanSlim level three and there's CanSlim level four. This is, this is way freaking beyond CanSlim level four, and I know, okay? They, they do not nuts and bolts the charts like this, believe me. Okay, yeah, this is the real world. It's not, well, look at the cup and the handle form, which leads to a point, folks. If you wait for the cup and handle, you're going to starve to death. That's why you have to find a couple of other chart patterns and understand chart patterns, which is what we do, because, again, if you just wait for that simple chart pattern, you better start looking for a job because it ain't going to happen. So today, it closes up on a slight pickup in volume. Now, looking at this tops going across here, I'll ask you, let's do real world, because this is the real world, all right? Well, first off, I'll ask you, should we be looking at this tomorrow, for tomorrow? Yeah. Frickin' A right, it's on my list. All right, now, question. Looking at this, you tell me, what's gonna be our entries? What would you look for? Okay, well, that's... Thank you, good. What's the high on this bar right here, Tom? Owen, that bar there, 189.79, okay, take it to that bar right there. Go over three more bars. Uh-huh. One more. There. High on that bar, 188.20. Now, tell me the high on this bar. Oh, the last one today. Uh, today's bar, please. Let me see here. You got a calculator I can borrow from you? Okay. Frickin' nickel? A nickel? You think people see this? You think we're the only one in the world that knows this? No, no. Money that moves stuff knows this. So, 
volume picked up today. Now, let's do something here and see how did this do, what did money see, what did smart money see into the close? Would you like to know that? What did they do today at the close? Hit up a 30 minute chart on this, okay? They sold it. They sold it. Now, knowing that, let's take a look at the hourly chart. And this is why you do this. Double confirmation. They knocked it down, didn't they? Now, given that, let's go, sellers, right on time. So now let's go back. I'm sorry I keep locking your view. Sorry about that, Pat. Let's go back to the daily. Knowing that, that there were sellers that came in on the hourly chart and the 30-minute chart into the close. Smart money acts into the close, okay? Knowing that and now looking at the day chart, would we really be interested in buying this, taking out today's highs? Or would we prefer maybe for it to take out the highs here with volume or the highs up here? There you go. See? They sold into it. So tomorrow... What are we going to be doing? We'll watch this stock, because it's a long base, folks. Now let's take it a step further. We just looked at the daily chart. We looked at the hourly chart. We looked at the 30-minute chart. And by the way, uh, institutional money does that too, okay? All right, this isn't just mom and pop doing this. Big money does this. What other time frame should we look at? Oh, go ahead, John, I'm sorry. Quick question. When you yes. went from the 30-minute chart to the hourly chart, because the market is not an even number of hours. Yes. The first, the first hourly bar is a half a bar, or half, half volume bar, um, yes. And the, then first, the first bar of the hourly is, is a half hour. You bet. Now, you bring up a great question. Some software programs do it the other way. They'll have, you know, from the market opens at 8.30 our time, 8.30 to 9.30, 9.30 to 10.30, blank, 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 and then the last bar is just a half hour bar for volume. So that's something to know. It's a great, great... Do they, do they have beer out there? I'll be right back. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, that, there you go. Oh, which leads to a good point. And, you know, I'll just show you. Folks, I can't stress enough. I, I, the really good people I know, they're not looking at stochastics. They're not looking at MACD. They're not looking at Bollinger Bands. They're, they're really, they're not, look, Wells, Wilder, RSI, relative strength. They're not looking at any of that stuff, okay? They're, they're really not, okay? They're looking at price and volume. They're looking at, they're really, really studying. Ed Sakota, Ed Sakota, he didn't talk about, I, I talked with him. He didn't, biggest mistake I ever made, he wanted to do some work with me on something and I didn't do it. That was freaking stupid. So, simple, simple. Price and volume and moving averages. And if you can, have a program that has the open, high, low, close. There's money there. There's big money there. So given what we said here, now we've looked at the daily, we've looked at the hourly, we've looked at the 30 minute, what other time frame? Boy, is it cold in here? Man, oh man, okay, mess my hair up. Okay, so here's the other thing we should do then, folks. This is the real world. Thank you, good job, Tony. Let's go to the weekly. Okay, folks, what do you, open, high, low, close volume. What do you see on the weekly? Did it? Yeah. How about three weeks ago? And how was that volume? Right up here. Lifting off. And then it goes up. Now, question for you. Looking at the weekly charts. Huh. Yeah, or, yeah, we could call it that. How did it close on this bar? Good. How about this bar? How about this bar? The red bar, I'm sorry. Okay, how about so far on this bar? Yeah. <laughs> Are they selling it? Are they really selling it? No. And then there's something else you can do, a great trick. You can say, well, is there a way to maybe tell if they're selling it or not? Yeah, the accumulation distribution rating is B. B, the best you can get is A, B. There you go. What did you just do now? 
you just connected the dots to build a case for where we could potentially enter that stock. You could say, well, I guess I could buy this taking out the highs here or the highs here. You got two weeks at top so far, but we've, got, we've still got three more days left in this week, correct? So we'll see what happens. By the way, folks, this is a max list stock. This son of a gun can move. I'm not, which I will also say, I'm not saying it's going to. All right, please. I, it, we don't know. Anybody who says, oh, this is what it's going to do, leave the room. I, I don't know the future. All right. Which leads to a point. I, I've never said this to you all, but I need to say this. Whoever you clear through or whoever you have your business with, and I don't want to know, okay, but you should contact them and ask them, is there a button on this platform so that if I have to sell everything instantly, I'm able to? And you can say, why the heck would you need that? Because if you live through 9-11, you need it, and I needed that, okay? Because by the time you made the freaking phone call, it was too late. Now, I am not predicting another 9-11, but you do need to know that. You need to know that on that platform. Yeah, the higher vo high volatility stuff. Hey, folks, I'll tell you, everybody says, oh, Netflix, that's a quality company. I could pull up a chart to you and show you how far ne Netflix. Netflix once lost 66% of its value in about three and a half months. 66%. And you can say, well, it came back. You can't tell me what you're feeling when you're down 66%. And it's easy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, they always, it's like they say it's called sigh hard instead of investing through the rearview mirror. <laughs> yeah, but no, I, you're, I agree with your points, though. I agree with your points. Yes? Is there any way you can set up a stock loss system based on Yeah, sure. Put in sell stops? Yeah. Yeah, you betcha. And put in, oh, pardon me? Well, the, uh, uh, barring a, a gap down, but without gap downs because they're very fluid, which leads to another point. Sell stops are wonderful. Sell stop limits, they're not, they're, you're, you're defeating your purpose. Your goal is to either lock in a profit or limit a loss. And if you put in a limit, if it runs through your limit, you defeated your purpose because you still own it. Don't do sell stop limits. Can't stress that enough, okay? Don't do, which, and this ties in with your points, and, and it's a good point too. Try to stick with big, bigger quality stocks. Don't, don't do low price stocks. Don't do stocks that don't do, you know, several hundred thousand shares a day volume. Stick with, stick with, and buy stocks that, by God, they're quality, okay? We're going to stop now because I want to get to something. What time is it, Owen? What are we looking at here? Holy shit, we're going to go till 10 tonight then. Is that okay? <laughs> huh? Okay. <laughs> Oh, do we? Well, heck, you guys will bring in some bunks. We'll just stay here. <laughs> yeah, there's a restaurant next door. What the heck? No. Yeah. I want to share some things with you that I, that I think will help you too. These are, I printed all this out for you. And if you'd be so kind, it's just take one and then pass it around. And then we're going to go through and look at these. All right. This is data that I put together through the years that there's, there's a lot of work on that, on that sheet. There's about 20 years of experience on that piece of paper. Here's one for you, Pat, and just go ahead and take that and pass it on. I want to go through and try to help hammer things down for you a little bit. My goal is this. I always sit there and think, you know, I'm really big on quotes. I post a lot of inspirational quotes and stuff like that, especially on Saturday morning. I love this quote, be the, child, be the person you needed when you were a child. And, and you know, we all needed that person. Growing up, growing up this is, I say this to my youth group all the time, to the leaders, growing up is hard. Anybody our age who said it wasn't is either lying or doesn't remember. And that's part of the reason I help out with youth group because of some of the some of the stuff these people face just eats them up alive. Good. I'll show you something here. Taking a look at this, stocks in the on very top line, 
stocks which exploded from the September 07 follow through day. Had to get it right. And you can go in, and I just want to show you something here. Looking at over on the left hand side, or the left hand, are the ticker symbols that you can all see. But this is what's most important. The second column, earnings. Look at the numbers. Earnings growth. Last quarter, 60, Pontius has Saskatchewan. They had a 67% increase in earnings. Mosaic, a 386%. CF was 222. You can go down the list. You see the, the next one down is Google. You see that? Google at 43%. Folks, that's the lowest number on this list is 43% earnings for the quarter. By the way, I must stress, that is the quarter before it made its move, not after. So that's the number you're looking for. So you know when I always talk about 40% earnings? Now you know why. This again, this is my research. All these stocks up at the very top, all these stocks were in the top 50 groups. The column, the earnings column, you can go down and look at all these. The next column, the sales column, look at the numbers. Low number here is 23%, down lower, Deer & Company was 6%, okay? I made notes on this. But then look at the earnings estimates in the far right column. Look at the estimates on all these stocks. They're always looking for positive numbers. So what are we looking for? We're looking, I'm quantifying things. We're looking for companies that have either great earnings and or great sales or revenues, and they've got good estimates going forward, and every stock in the top line from the bottom, or the second line from, they're all in the top 50 groups. There's 197 industry groups. These are all in, these stocks, folks, the biggest winners I've ever made in my freaking life are on this sheet. I will tell you that one. You can say, which ones? Pot SS Saskatchewan was huge, all right? We showed the one before down here in, this, in the last quadrant, dry ships. Dry ships was unbelievable. This will help you. You can say, Patrick, what would I do with this? I'll tell you what you would do with this. When you are making your custom screens, filtering for stocks, the takeaway is this. Look for companies that last quarter's earnings were up at least 40% or higher. Look for companies that last quarter sales were up at least 20% or higher. Put both of those constraints on your screens. 40% earnings and 20% sales. They are all in the top 50 groups. Make that a constraint. All of them were above the 50-day moving average line. When they, you've heard this a couple times, haven't you? <laughs> all these, I, I can you, a couple more times. You know? All of these stocks were above the 50-day moving average line. All of these stocks were in leading groups. What we're doing here is we have a recipe for a cake, a great cake. On many of these, relative strength was leading into new high ground. I gave you something. Here's what you can do. You all have computer software programs at home. Some of these companies don't exist anymore, okay? I'm not going to lie to you. They've been merged with other companies, so they're gone. Just go in and take those ticker symbols in the left-hand column. Go back to the follow-through day in 2007. Just, just do this. Make it easy for yourself. Change this and make the last date that you're looking at uh, December 27th of 2007. That's the last day on the chart. And then click in these ticker symbols and look at the charts. And you'll go, oh my goodness. The moves these stocks made, and they all have great numbers. That's point. Do you use this as a, looking back, like do you do, the, do you do this today looking forward? Like, like I was looking at something this morning, and, and um, it was a stock that, I don't know, somebody was talking about or something, and I read something about it. And it had great numbers, and I know I, I noted in my, in my notebook, <coughs> great numbers, but in a, it's in a high you know, a group that's over 100 where I kind of foo-foo those because I find yeah. that I do better if I stay under 20, you know, industry groups. Oh, the top 20 groups? Yeah. I will go down there. It's for me. Me too. I want to stack the deck. It's like I might miss something. I don't care. Yeah. I, don't, I want to stack as many pieces as I can in my favor. 
leading groups and leading stocks. And again, it's not my idea, it's Bill O'Neill's. But this, all this, I didn't have any preconceived notion when I did this. But I'm telling you what, there's a lot of work on this sheet of paper. Hours, hours, hours. But it was so fun going through it. Did you do that on things that are happening now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got it. That's why I don't have any hair. Jeez, <laughs> whiz. My wife's leaving me. She, so you know. No, I'm kidding. So that's it. You know, the kids are gone, so what the heck? No. So. Great. Great question. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. And by the way, thank you for doing that. If I ever say something that doesn't make sense, just hey, I don't know what you mean. You're not going to. Oh, great question. Oh, I was using a flare. It wasn't a crayon. No. <laughs> Looks like a dang crayon, doesn't it? Good Lord. Okay, let's do the first line. Pot S Saskatchewan. If you look directly above the earnings column, do you see where it says most recent with an arrow pointing? Okay, what it's showing is, that's a great question, John. The, the most recent earnings were 67%. The quarter before the earnings were up 110. Okay, and then go over to the right one column. Sales, the most recent sales, 36%. The quarter before that, 46%. And that's how we did that. By the way, you'll see one way down there, really low way down there is Deer and Company in the bottom quadrant. But you will see, you, by the way, the far right column, earnings estimates. Look at those, look at those earnings increases for the year. Oh yeah, oh yes, and and I also look. Denise says he's got a good question. So this is 2019 earnings estimates, 2020. Okay, and it's got red arrows. It means the earnings estimates are dropping, dropping a little bit. It's not a huge red flag for me. I do not hang my hat on that completely. Okay, what do I? What am I really concerned with? I'm really concerned with the current numbers. I really want to know what's going on now. Okay, that's fair, but always in a good group too. Now you can say, well, Patrick, what about this? Is this a great group? All right, and let's see where they got the group rated. Oh, and we should talk about short interest on this and stuff like this. Oh, man. Yeah, group relative strength is 80, so it's okay. It's all right, that would be okay. But there is something that this has. I don't really tear into the numbers on these stocks. Why? Because they are on the, the max list. The max list. That's it. And, and you'd ask a great question. How, do I make changes in the max list? Yeah, well, every once in a while I do. But overall, I've seen through time, money, they, they can re, those companies, by God, can reinvent themselves. What would cause you to, uh, to boost uh, listing on the max list? Good question. It falls so much in price that it's no longer relevant or the product or service that they make, there's another company that's doing better than they are, that is more innovative, that has better earnings and sales, their competition, and this stock has just gone by the wayside. It's no longer a, it'd be analogous to a company that makes, years ago, that made cassette tapes. They make the best dang cassette tapes, but then another company comes out and starts making CDs. Well, that company goes by the wayside. Well, then another company comes out with flash drives, then the CDs go by the way. Yes. There you go, research in motion. In the general electric. Yeah. yeah, how things have changed. Well, let me ask you, so in general GE, what do you think about? Do you, do you think they're going to be all right? Or do you, do you it's a great question, and I'm going to be honest. I don't know. I, I, and, and you can say, Pat, I, like, oh, you mean you don't know what's going to happen? No, I don't know enough about the company right now to say. I, honest to God, I can't. I, I'd have to do some digging before I would give... To me, would be, I want to get you ask a serious question. I would want to give a serious answer. So I would really have to look at it a little bit. Oh, oh yeah, they were. Oh, I I agree. Yeah, how things change. Yeah, but hopefully they'll. They'll find a niche and grow again. I mean, we could pull up a chart. Should we pull? It? You want to see the chart on it? Sure, let's do it. Is this? 
Oh, yeah, before you change it, go ahead. Yes, sir. With a stock like Alibaba, does it, do you, are you concerned because it's China and all the trade stuff going on with that, or are you just strictly the stock? The chart. But I will take in consideration if things are really heating up against with us, with China. I do factor, because there's two stocks on the max list that are Chinese. Baidu. You got it. You know them. Baidu and Alibaba. So I've made good money with both of them, you know, so we'll have to see. Okay, so let's look at GE. Mm. Mm. Look at that. I got to sit down. You're really. Is it something personal here? Yeah, really. Look at this. I mean, is this, this is, yeah. Okay, here's a monthly chart for you. Boy, that's some wicked stuff, isn't it? Let's go, okay, go to the weekly again, Owen. How are we doing for time? Okay, good. Okay. Okay, so here's, let's go through this. I don't really look at the e earnings per share rank and stuff like that. Accumulation distribution, D minus. Well, the worst you can get is E. That's pretty rough, okay? Everything about this is, is, is not good, okay? Also, here's something very intriguing. Just analyze the chart. These are the number of mutual funds that own the stock. 2152, 2093, 2057, 2048. Thank you. They're selling. The funds are getting out of the dang thing for now. Can't deny it. All right? Um, estimates going forward, 2019, they're looking for a 12% decrease. 2020, they're looking for a 25% increase. So, you know, maybe it'll change. Now, where we can see this stream here is just crud. This, this, this is just, there's nothing good about this. Nothing. Now, let's go further and let's take a look at the chart. Price and volume. Fell on heavy volume. Came back on about the same volume, do you agree? So that's good. That's good. And then started to drop down again, all right? And then had a gap down right here. Okay, on the weekly chart, on heavy volume. And then there's another great tactic that you can utilize, and it's this. What's the accumulation distribution rank of the stock? D minus. The worst you can get is E. I mean, they're, they're selling this stock. Could it change eventually? No, oh, sure. Of course it could. I've seen... Every max list stock I've seen at one time or another with an accumulation distribution of E. And they, they reinvent themselves and they come back. Could this eventually come back? Sure. Sure it could. Is there anything to do with it now? No. No. There's, there's nothing now. But eventually, who's to say it won't come back? But there's a great quote. And this, I had this tape. You all know this. I had this tape to my computer monitor. And I'm telling you what. This saved me in 2000 saved me, okay, and it's this quote, I'll believe in what I see and not in what I believe. It doesn't matter what I think. It matters what the stock's doing. Mine just says set the damn stock. Pardon me? Mine just says set the damn stock. There you go. There you go. And, that's, and Patrick, you know what? Right. Manage it. Right on. Manage it. So there's General Electric for you. Pretty, pretty rough. If, by the way, if anybody ever wants a you know, a chart mailed to them, or emailed them to them or something like that, give me a holler and I'll be glad to do it for you. And, and mission winners, something we do for VIPs, and something you know this, is people ask questions and I make videos all day for people on stocks. Hey, Pat, what do you think about, I forget one of the last ones we did, but anyway, we do it all the time. Pardon me? Yeah, spots to get in. Spots to get in, you know, chart, in-depth chart analysis going through bar by bar. And by the way, the charts I use, I don't use MarketSmith charts. I use my charts, instant charts, because they're high-resolution color, black background with green and red. And every bar has open, high, low, close. So it helps us with our investing decisions. I want to go further with this, folks. We've torn this apart. Take this home and study it if you want. Please take a look at this one right here. These are stocks 
This is, this is research from Investors Daily, okay? These are stocks that made <laughs> big moves in, this is a heck of a lot of work, folks, 2003, four or five, you can go on the left. There's years of stuff going on in this. And these were the stocks that made big moves. If you have a chance, I gave this to you as a study guide. If you have a chance, some of these companies no longer exist. They've been bought by somebody else. But go in and look at some of these charts like GoPro. I don't know if they're still in existence. GoPro, Amazon. And look at the column. Earnings were up 600%. And the next quarter, they were up 100%. Go back and look at what that stock did in, two, in breakout. You see the second column where it's got B.O.? Breakout. Breakout. April 3rd, that stock broke out. June 3rd, J, uh, J.Con broke out. August 3rd, Netflix broke Folks, there's a lot of work in this. If you really tear this apart, you'll know more than 99% of the people out there on what to look for in your charts. All these. There's Google back there. DNA is, I think, gone. CME, Chicago, Mercury, Teal and Chase. And again, some of these you'll type in the ticker symbol and it'll be gone, okay? They've been taken out. But if you go back and change the date and look at some of these, Crocs. Hey, I remember doing the IBD meetup talking about Crocs. I think, you, Denise, were you there at the Chesterfield YMCA? That was sweet potato pie on that stock. That was a rocket. People say it's a fad. Well, it's a fad that doubled and tripled in a matter of, uh, what, six months, seven months? And I'm not talking a low price stock. I'll, I'll take, what was it, 15 to 45 or 30 to 90 or something like that? People say, oh, it's rubber shoes? Yeah, I'll take 30 to 90, okay? Go down and just go through these and look at these, and it will really, really help you. This is a great, great study sheet for you, all right? I'm going to keep on going here. The next line, the next sheet is this one right here. Twenty-six stocks that made these are the I called them the boomers, all right. And this was research. I did this research. The average earnings of those twenty-six stocks was one hundred and sixty-six percent before they broke out. That was the average earnings growth. Average sales growth was seventy-one percent before they broke out. Put the recipe of a cake together and say, you know, we're talking stocks that stocks stocks that can change your life. Okay, I mean, a, a stock that you can make five or six figures on in a matter of several months. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking buying, you know, what are you talking about, putting your whole account in it? No, no, that'd be stupid, which leads to another point. We always go off on tangents, don't we? Please, never, never try to hit the home run. Never, please never take your entire account and put it in one stock. And you can say, I'm going to put it all in Amazon or Google. I don't care. Don't ever do that to yourself. It, it'll, it'll, it's a bad habit that could really, I've shared this with you. I've talked with men my age on the phone that have broken down and cried because they got their ass kicked so bad in something. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I had one about eight years ago, and I had to physically get up out of the office and walk out and put aspirin underneath my tongue. It was MasterCard on a gap down. I was 12,000 bucks in three seconds, and I thought I was going to throw up. I cried. I cried. I felt like such an idiot because of what I did. Never do that again. Never. Sure. Ever. Manage your risk. Yeah, manage your risk. $12,000 hit is a big hit on what the size of that account was at that time. That's a lot of money to lose in, one, in three, two seconds. And it kept falling. You can say, oh, just wait till it comes back. I live in the now. Oh, exactly. Oh, I do that all the time. All the time. But it still hurts. It still hurts. Yeah, oh, shh.
Ducks. I kept it clean. <laughs> um, yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, if, uh, okay, going into earnings, say you have one. Oh, okay, let's just say you have some Amazon. Yes. Okay, before earnings, like what we bought. Yes. So, and then we sold it down um, to yes. what, 50%? We have 50% left? I think so. I'd have so, to go. Okay, if we have 50% left, uh, left, are you going to uh, go into earnings with that 50%? I'll take it less. How, how, how low would I might take it down to 10%, 10 or 20%. 10 percent. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Hey, I've seen stocks. I saw a price line once. Yeah. That's yeah. not a gun. Yeah. yeah. How much was it? 200 points? Was it 200? It's down like 200 points after earnings? Yeah. I mean, that, hey, I don't give a rip what anybody says. 200 points is a trip to the bank. And now, this is the other thing that's interesting. Pardon me? What caused price line? Earnings. Earnings, which is, and now you know it's booking.com, so they changed their name. One of the things I'll share with you folks, please, we're in earnings season. Know the earnings dates. You got it. Know the earnings dates. I, I can't stress that enough. Have a plan. Have the And know this. This is a fact that most people don't know. It is normally not the first response to the earnings news or the second response that counts. It's the third response. And also, it is normally not the action after the close that counts. It's what happens the next day in regular trading hours. You ain't going to find that in many books. That's the real world. And you can say, how do I know this? Well, after doing it for 30 years, you pick up a few things watching them because this is what we did. Now, got to share this with you too. This is important. Okay, how do you figure out the third Oh, great question. You'll have a company that'll have earnings. You know, the stock closes here, all right, and then it drops here, drops down, then it goes back up, okay, then it does whatever. After it's done three zigzags, after the third zigzag is normally when it'll start to do what it's really supposed to do, which leads to another point. This is real world stuff. You're not going to find this in a book, okay? Don't get too twisted with the crap that happens after hours and after hours trading with stocks. Years ago, I saw Priceline. Priceline, honest to God, I'm not lying to you. Priceline gapped down, and it's, that was long before it was a $1,900 stock or whatever it is. Priceline gapped down 200 points after hours. It was like a $900 stock, and it fell to $700. All right? It's like, that's the end of the freaking world. All right? And people, what did people do? Shit, they panicked and they sold. And the next morning, it opened up 100. Uh, have you ever heard the, the, the uh, phrase, uh, buy, on the, uh, buy on the rumor or buy on the street? Yeah, and, and sell on the news. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, oh, yes. Everybody's constantly juggling and anticipating what's going to happen. And there's a tremendous amount of hype with it. And that's why I don't have cable, because I don't watch CNBC or any of that stuff. You know, or Fox, there's just too much emotion in it. I hate, Owen knows this. I hate the emotion. I hate it. And so they'll try to game it. They'll try to game it in anticipation, all right? But then after the news comes out, then the smart money knows what's going on. And then they'll start reacting to it. But before the smart money, and I sound like I'm talking out of the side of my mouth, before the smart money comes in there and starts really doing stuff, the dumb emotional money will get in there and do a bunch of crap, but then the smart money digests the numbers, and then they'll act on it, which might actually take from the close after hours until the next day. That's why I I really, you'll see it, this earnings season, I guarantee it, the next time we we meet, I will ask you, did you see any earnings of any stocks that gapped down huge and it looked like the end of the dang world, and the next day the stock gapped up. Mark my words. I'll ask you, if I remember, and you'll say, yeah, I saw a couple of them. So be, just be really careful with the earnings, you know, around earnings. Just, and don't, be really careful, be really, be really careful buying a stock like a day or two before earnings. Please be really careful with that, because it can really wreck you. And it, it can wreck you, it can wreck you financially, it can wreck you emotionally too. It really, you know, it causes I'm, a. I'm late in bed at night and just thinking, let's see what that was going to be. Yeah. <laughs> That's when mm-hmm. I know, yeah, I'm never too much afraid. 
That's it. You know, who's it, Jesse Livermore? They were sitting there talking. Has anybody read the book, Reminiscence of a Stock Operator? You know, they're sitting there talking where the guy says, you know, jeez, I'm losing. Or was it Nicholas Darvis? Everybody ever read uh, How I Made $2 Million in the Stock Market? The dancer? Yeah, the dancer. I tried to call him. This was before the internet. I tried to call him. I found out he was freaking dead. But, I, but, but yeah, yeah. But I talked to his publicist in New York. You know, I got to talk to him. You know. But anyway, that's a. Those are different days. No. Um, what's the quote? Yeah, I'm losing sleep over my stock, and the guy said, "Yeah, um, sell down to your sleeping point. Sell down to your sleeping point. Just, just be careful with it." I, I can't stress that enough. How are we for time, Owen? Where are we at? Okay. Well, let's go here. We've, we've covered these sheets here. And I want you to, these are for you, okay? I printed these out for you. And again, please, if you're really serious about in, your investing, go home and study these. And take this sheet here. I mean, folks, I, I'm not kidding. This isn't, this, I didn't get this out of a book. I put these together. And it's not, I'm not a martyr about it. I still... I still study these. I still have these in my office. Owen's been over in my office. He's going, geez, you've got a lot of stuff in files over there. I still study this because it helps me. You know what it does? There's so much hype out there that you can quickly lose your way, and pretty soon you're flying out of control, and you're not really thinking about earnings anymore, and you're not thinking about sales anymore, and you're not thinking about industry group. You're just getting all hyped up with a bunch of stuff and blather. Turn it off. Turn it off. And that's also why I don't, I don't, and I don't mean this in an arrogant way, I don't listen to anybody. I don't listen to anybody. Do I get any newsletters? Somebody sends me a newsletter, okay? And, but I don't subscribe to it. I don't subscribe to any of them. You say, Pat, what do you subscribe to? I'll tell you what. I'm going to be very honest with you. I subscribe to MarketSmith. MarketSmith. The, 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 this product. If, if you're interested in it, IBD is, and again, I do not work for them. I get nothing from them. I never have, except a mug. If you're interested, go to investors.com, though. There's a tremendous amount of free information in there for education that you'll be able to pick up a lot of different things. Can't stress that enough. There you go. See, and that's digital, by the way. I will tell you this. I used to get the paper every day, and I loved reading through it. I hate the digital. I hate looking at those little charts on the digital. I hate it. And so I don't, I don't do it. I don't do it. But for, for education, for great education, it's a great thing. One thing I'll share with you, though, please be careful because they put in so much stuff, it can kind of, after a while, get, it's like sensory, sensory overload. It's a little too much. That's why you can say, so then, Patrick, what do you use? I use MarketSmith. I use MarketSmith. I have custom screens using all this data that I shared with you. By the way, I don't have any secrets. Put all this together, I've got a couple of screens. One of the screens, last quarter's earnings at 40% or higher. Or last quarter, another screen I have, average last quarter sales up. Well, we can punch up my screens, can't we? Do we have time? Yeah, if you closed it, forget it. Oh, here, no, click on MarketSmith here. They should get me in real quick. There you go. Something like that. Yeah. And click on screen. Folks, you know, I always tell you about 40% earnings or average of 45% sales. You can't catch me in a lie. There they are. 40% earnings. I always talk about the top 40 groups. Shucks, there it is. Sales, 45% sales. The bill screen. Stock, do I always talk about stocks in the top 10 groups? By God, there they are. There they are. 85, 85, 90. What is that? Last quarter's earn, uh, EPS rank, 85 or higher. Relative strength, 85 or higher. Composite rating, 90 or higher. By the way, you can say, do you have other constraints in there? Well, sure. Jeez, I'll show them to you. Let's click on this and click open edit. I'll show you. Here. I don't have anything to hide. These are all my constraints. Relative strength, over 80. By the way, you can see, folks, I'd start with 7,668 78 stocks. Take it down, 1,335. Percent off high. I want stocks near highs. It's within 20% of 52-week highs. Top 50 groups, price over 15 bucks. I don't do low price stocks. I, I just, big money ain't going to go for low price stocks. All right? I want to fish where they fish. 
And I don't have an ego with it either. I used to friend. Okay. Top 50 groups, price over 15 bucks. It's, it's over the 50 day moving average line. By the way, that's not my idea. That's Bill O'Neill's idea and Mark Minervini's idea. I, I steal from a lot of people, okay? Over 50 days. Volume does at least 140,000 shares a day. I don't like thin stocks, okay? Finance, okay? What do I not have in here? I can tell you what I don't have in here. I don't have any ETFs in here. These are stocks. I want stocks. I don't want ETFs, all right? Earnings, 40% or higher. Accumulation distribution, A, B, or C. Sector, no utilities, and guess what else I don't have in there? Thank you. No biotechnology. Composite rating, 75 or higher. Folks, there's 7,000, almost 700 stocks on the, in the database. I got 84 stocks to look at. And I know from all this, the good ones are going to be in there. Uh huh. Right. That is a great question, John. By the way, all your, I have to compliment all of you for your questions and comments. These are great. This is what I like. It's dynamic. It's not an element of groupthink. I hate that. That's dangerous, okay? Why do I not do biotech? They're great when they go up, but it only takes one news story, and I have seen people just get... I had a good friend of mine I traded with, Gary. God, it was over 10 years ago. He said, I will, he got ripped on a biotech. Now, there was one recently that dropped. What was it? Shit. Yeah, and it, it was a disaster. And it's just out of the, and you know what really sucks? The stock looked great. The chart looked great. And then, boom, it comes out with this. I don't need it. I got enough problems. I'm losing my hair. I got enough problems with all this crap. So. Yes. I really don't prefer anything. Looking over here, 15 bucks, 15 and higher. No. No, no, I uh, look, I'd have a heart attack. I mean, I'm, on the, I'm shit, I'm on the edge now. No, I don't, I don't, I, <laughs> no, I don't. But, but I always stress everything. That's just what I found and from the people that I've talked to through the years that it's worked well for where you can put money in and overall you can sleep at night. I don't ever want to, I don't, I don't need surprises. But that, there's one of my screens right there. there. Here, can we do another one real quick? And then we got to go, I guess. Let's do the bill screen. This is, this is data from Bill O'Neill. And let's click, uh, click up at the top, open edit, please. There you go. Here we go. Earnings per share at 80, accumulation distribution, A or B, 80. Last quarter's earnings, sales up 20%. It's over 15 buckets, 25% of it. No utilities, okay? No biotech. Group rank A, B, or C. Top 60 groups, does 150,000 shares a day, timeliness A or B, price, it's over the 50 day, and no ETFs. And I go from 7,600 down to 33 stocks. And these are the ones that meet Bill O'Neill's constraints. You, um, just click that black box real quick, could you? Oh, oh, that's good too. Okay, and then click it right here again. There they are. And by the way, how do we sort it? It's locked. Industry group rank first, percent off high second. Here's the, here's the stocks in the group. And some of these, some of you know, <laughs> do some of those names look familiar to you? Okay, like that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've owned that. Punch that chart up real quick and then we're going to quit. And do a daily. And we're going to wrap this out. There you go. Fits the bill. Got the numbers. Had the four, minimum of 40%, right? Last quarter's earnings of 42%. Relative strength, leading the stock in a new guy. It's in the top group. It was in the top group back then. It broke out. Broke out on good volume. Market was doing really good. Boom, boom, boom. We're still in it. Why sell it? Did we sell some in the strength? Took a little bit off, but it's just walking up the line. And 63 to 92, 30 points basically. 50% since the first of the year. And it's just going. But this, and it's not bragging. Ignore these numbers, okay? But this is what we were looking at. Minimum of 40%, it meets the grade. Was it in the top group when it broke out? Yes. Was relative strength. Folks, I'm going to show you something. The market's doing this. This is the S&P 500 chart. Can you tell I get excited about this? Okay. 
I've had people that say they couldn't work with me. I don't know why. Okay, but here, look at this. The S&P 500's doing this. That's the S&P 500 index. Look at this sucker's dropping. <laughs> look what this stock's doing. Oh, it's hanging in just fine. Hits a new, this hits a new low for the, for the move, and this doesn't. See that? Just little tricks of the trade like this. Push through right there. $63 a share. And off. That's what we're looking for. And we'll be done now. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Thank you for your time and, um, and for your questions. And if you have questions, feel free to ask us. We'll answer them. And, and just uh, be safe. I'll say two things. Go Blues. Go Cardinals. That'd be great. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you.